My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in Jerusalem in front of a big structure which is called the Tower of David. It's important for many reasons, but for us, the important reason is the big stones right in the center of this tower. These are stones that are left over from the palace of Herod here in the city of Jerusalem. And when I say Herod, I mean the palace that was first built by Herod the Great. However, by the time that we come to the Easter story, Herod the Great has been long dead. Now this palace is used by his son, Herod Antipas, who is in charge of the jurisdiction of Galilee, and that's where Jesus was originally from. Well, when Jesus was being charged by Pilate over in Pilate's palace, over on the other side of the old city, and Pilate discovered that Jesus was from Galilee, he said, great, that means I don't have to deal with him. And he sent him across town to this location where Herod's palace was. And when Herod discovered he was finally going to meet Jesus, he was so excited. And I want to read to you from my book, Paid in Full, what the Bible tells us about Herod's encounter with Jesus. In Luke 28, verse 3, the Bible says Herod was exceedingly glad, for he was desirous to see Jesus for a long season because he had heard many things about him. Now listen to what I've written. Why had Herod longed to see Jesus for so many years? The verse says, because he had heard many things of him. Jesus was a name that the Herod household had heard for years. They had all heard about him. They had heard about Jesus' supernatural birth. They heard about the kings from the east who came to acknowledge him at his birth. They heard of the attempt of their father, Herod the Great, to kill Jesus by ordering all the babies in Bethlehem to be murdered. They heard about Jesus and his parents slipping into Egypt and waiting for the right moment to come back into Israel. They heard a lot about the ministry of Jesus touching the nation with healing and delivering power. Stories of Jesus must have been very familiar to the Herod household. And Herod Antipas had longed for a chance to finally meet this famous personality and had wished for it for many years. Jesus was a living legend even in his own lifetime, and now he was standing in front of Herod, and Herod was finally going to meet Jesus face to face. A human king meeting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And Herod had a request. He wanted Jesus to perform a miracle for him. You see, he had heard so many legends about Jesus, he knew Jesus was a miracle worker, but Jesus refused to perform. And Herod became furious, and he began to scorn the King of Kings and the Lord of Glory. And all of that happened in this area, in the palace of Herod here in the city of Jerusalem. And this is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Today we're going to see what happened to Jesus when he was shipped by Pilate over across Jerusalem to the palace of Herod. That's where we were in the introduction to today's palace. Actually, the Tower of David, but the Tower of David is constructed with some of the stones that remain from Herod's palace. And that's where Jesus was interviewed and interrogated by Herod Antipas. It's going to be great. Don't miss this program. But I want to remind you that I'm offering you my series called Unknown Facts about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They may not be unknown to everyone. They were just unknown to me. And I grew up in church, never missing Easter. Every year I heard the same Easter message year after year, always wondering, is there any more to the story that I've never heard? So when I became an adult and I began to read the Greek New Testament, really became acquainted with Scripture and history, I began to dig through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, extracting things no one had ever shared with me about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and it really made this story come alive for me. It's in these programs, which we put into this series, 25 parts, but it comes with a marvelous study guide with the Greek words, the definitions, the points, the principles, questions for you to consider. It really is marvelous for your personal growth 
or if you're discipling someone, I can't imagine a better tool to disciple them at the time of Easter, or if you're in a Bible study group, it's just wonderful. Order this today. We're also offering you my book, which is called Paid in Full, an in-depth look at the defining moments of Christ's package. It's a beautiful book, but more important is what's in the pages. These pages are loaded with information, with insight, with revelation that I've extracted from the Gospels, which really take us into this story like I had never heard it. The back of the book says, A revolutionary look at the story you thought you knew, paid in full, is a riveting account of Jesus' final hours. I really want to encourage you to order this, read it, especially now at this season, but really you can read it any time of the year. It's just a marvelous book to take you into the work of Christ on the cross and in the resurrection. It's powerful. But today we're going to pick up where we left off in the last program. And my wife watched the last program and she said, wow, I never knew those details about how the Jews were also trying to get rid of Pontius Pilate. I just thought they wanted to get rid of Jesus. She said, Rick, tell that to me again. So I believe today as we get started, I'm going to quickly review that again because that's new information for most people. When the Jews attempted to get rid of Jesus, they also had a strategy to get rid of Pontius Pilate. They did not like Pontius Pilate. Typically, a Roman governor ruled Judea 12 to 36 months. If a Roman governor made it 36 months in Judea, huh, that was quite a record because Judea was filled with sedition, insurrections, riots, revolts, and not many rulers made it more than 36 months. But Pontius Pilate ruled for 10 years. 10 years. He really obtained a place in history because he ruled there for so long. And he ruled long because he was brutal. He was ruthless. He had no problem shedding blood. And because of his style of leadership, he ruled for 10 years. And the Jews loathed him. They despised him because he didn't like them. And because of his treatment of them, they didn't like him. And they were always looking for a way to get rid of Pontius Pilate. So on the night that they delivered Jesus to Pontius Pilate, they had a three-pronged strategy. And very quickly, I want to go over these three points one more time. I'm going to read from my notes because there's so much information. Number one, the religious leaders wanted to see Jesus judged by the Roman court. That was number one which would ruin Jesus' reputation and guarantee His crucifixion and would vindicate them in the eyes of the people. And for this to happen, they brought two charges officially against Jesus. Number one, they said that Jesus told the people to not pay their taxes. That was not true, but that is what they alleged. Number two, they said Jesus claims to be the King of the Jews. Well, if they could prove these two charges, then Jesus, by law, had to be executed. If he had told the people not to pay their taxes, that was a federal offense, he should be executed for that. If Jesus really claimed to be the king of the Jews, then he was claiming to be a rival king to the Roman emperor, and that was not permitted. And according to Roman law, Jesus should be executed. And if they could prove these two points, it would guarantee Jesus' condemnation, Jesus' execution, and last of all, they would feel vindicated in the eyes of the people. This was strategy number one. Strategy number two, they wanted to see Pilate removed from power in the middle of this process. Listen to this. They wanted to see Pilate removed from power on the charge that he was unfaithful to the Roman emperor because he would not crucify a man who claimed to be a rival king to the emperor. They understood that if Pilate let Jesus go free, the news of that would quickly reach the city of Rome. The Roman emperor would hear of that. He would be offended. Wow, how could Pilate do that? Somebody in Judea is claiming to be a king, claiming to be an emperor, and Pilate let him go free. This would be such an offense to the emperor that the emperor would either banish him or execute Pilate. So the Jews had quite a strategy. Remember that Jesus called them vipers. Vipers. They were acting like serpents, trying to insert their fangs and their venom into Jesus or into Pilate. If best, they wanted to get rid of both of them. 
That was really their strategy. But if Pilate refused to take action against Jesus, at least they thought they could get rid of Pilate. Because Pilate would be called a traitor, he would be called unfaithful if he didn't crucify Jesus. This was a very deliberate strategy they concocted in this moment. Number three, it really didn't matter what Pilate did because the Jews intended to crucify or kill Jesus anyhow. Listen to point number three. They wanted to take Jesus back into their own Sanhedrin court if Pilate would not crucify him, where they had the authority to stone him to death for claiming to be the Son of God. If Pilate let Jesus go free, this was the best of all for these religious leaders. Because Pilate would get in trouble and he would be removed, and they were going to take Jesus back into their court and kill him anyway. So the truth is, this whole event when Jesus was delivered to Pilate, was concocted to create a political catastrophe for Pilate, also with the hopes that maybe in the process they could get rid of this man called Jesus of Nazareth. These were vipers injecting their fangs, injecting their venom into this situation. It was just horrible what was happening. And Pilate gave Jesus three opportunities to defend himself and Jesus passed every opportunity. And according to Roman law, when someone was charged, they had three opportunities to speak up in their defense. If they passed those opportunities three times, then they were automatically legally charged as guilty. Jesus passed every opportunity to defend himself. And of course, this is what Isaiah had prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7, which says, as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Why didn't Jesus defend himself? Because Jesus knew it was the Father's plan for him to die on the cross for you and for me. But Pilate couldn't bring himself to execute Jesus. He just did not want to do it. In fact, the Bible tells us he sought a way to release him. And I asked the question in previous programs, maybe he saw something in Jesus' eyes. Maybe he was affected by Jesus' behavior. I'm sure that Jesus looked like a bloody mess. Jesus had already been sweating blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had been spit on by religious leaders. He had been beaten and slapped and physically abused. And maybe Pilate knew Jesus had already been put through so much and he just did not want to crucify Jesus and even sought a way to let him go. But when he heard that Jesus was from Galilee, Pilate began rejoicing because Galilee was under the jurisdiction of Herod Antipas. And Herod Antipas just happened to be in town at that moment to celebrate the Passover with the Jews, and Pilate was thrilled. He found the loophole he was looking for to get out of this mess. He literally said, hey, if Jesus is from Galilee, why am I dealing with this problem? This is Herod's problem. And Jesus was then sent across town to Herod's palace where he stood before Herod. And this leads us to my teaching today. And the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 23, verse 8, when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad for he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he had hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Well, let's talk about what Herod we're discussing. There were multiple Herods. The Herod family was very large. We begin with Herod the Great. Herod the Great was the Herod at the time that Jesus was born. Herod by this time had been dead a long time. But he had multiple sons, and the sons who survived their father because he killed several of them, there were three that survived. There was Herod Archelaus. He survived, and he ruled one part of Israel. There was Herod Philip, he ruled another part. And then there was Herod Antipas. That's the Herod that Jesus now stood before. And Herod Antipas had jurisdiction of Galilee. Herod Antipas was a very wicked, wicked man. His name is interesting, Herod Antipas. The word Antipas could be a declension of the word pater, which is the Greek word for fathers. And if it is a declension of the word pater, Antipas means the one who is against the fathers, it would indicate one who is against rule or authority, one who is against his heritage. It would show the picture of rebellion and disrespect for authority. 
It could also be translated as antipas. The word pas means all. The word anti means everything. You put the two words together. It's one who's against everything and everybody. It doesn't matter which interpretation you take of the word antipas. It shows us he was a person who was hard to get along with. He disrespected others. He was against everybody, against parental authority, against any kind of authority. He was Herod Antipas. So that was his reputation, which was confirmed later in the writings of Josephus, which tells us that Herod Antipas was a tyrant. He was wicked, very, very difficult to get along with, and cruel to people. And now Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, is standing in front of this Herod Antipas. And the Bible tells us that Herod was euphoric. He was so excited. In fact, the Bible tells us when Herod saw Jesus, that word saw, the Greek word horeo, the word horeo means to see, to behold. So you could translate it when Herod beheld Jesus. However, the Greek word really means to delightfully view. It describes a scrutinizing look or to look with the intent to Examine, And this paints a very important picture for us of what Herod Antipas felt that moment when Jesus finally stood in front of him. He was delighted. He didn't just look at Jesus. He really beheld Jesus. He examined Jesus. He took a scrutinizing view of Jesus. He took a delightful view of Jesus. He was so excited to see Jesus. He really looked him over, scrutinizing and examining this man that now stood before him. And the Bible says Herod was exceedingly glad, exceedingly glad. Listen to what the Greek word means. It describes extreme excitement, euphoric emotions of someone who is ecstatic about something, which means Herod inside was jumping up and down. He was so excited that Jesus was finally standing in front of him. Why was he so excited? Well, the verse tells us, Luke 23, verse 8, and when Herod saw Jesus, now we understand the Greek means when he really scrutinized Jesus, when he delightfully looked upon Jesus, beholding him fully, so excited, he was exceedingly glad, he was euphoric, he was ecstatic. Why? For he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him. The word desirous is the Greek word thalo, which describes a wish or a desire. However, the phrase that is used here intensifies the wish in Greek. It describes a very strong desire, a very strong wish. So he had wished strongly for a very, very long time to have this opportunity to see Jesus face to face. In fact, the Bible says of a long season. These words in Greek mean for many years or for a many, many seasons. Many, many seasons had passed, and Herod, all these years, all these seasons, had been longing for an opportunity to meet this Jesus face to face. And now it's happening, and he is euphoric about it. Why did he want to meet Jesus? Well, the verse says he had heard many things of him. What did he hear? We covered this in the last program, but I want to cover it again. Number one, he heard of Jesus' supernatural birth. How did he hear of that? Because he was a Herod. His father was Herod the Great, who was the king at the time that Jesus was born. Jesus' birth was legendary. He had always heard of this Jesus that was miraculously born. Number two, he heard about the kings that came from the east at the time of Jesus' birth. That's an amazing fact. Herod had always heard this story about these kings coming from the east. Number three, he heard about his father's attempt to get rid of this Jesus when he killed all the babies in Bethlehem. Not many people escaped the wrath of Herod the Great. Jesus did. This was remarkable, and the Herod family all knew there was a baby that escaped their father's wrath. Number four, he heard about how Jesus and his parents slipped into Egypt to escape Herod and stayed there until the time of Herod's death. And finally, number five, they had heard about the miraculous healing ministry of Jesus because Jesus' ministry was legendary even during Jesus' time on earth. Jesus was legendary in the land of Israel. And Herod had heard all these things. He had heard the name Jesus his entire life. It was a famous name in the Herod family, but none of the Herods had ever met him. And now he was the first Herod to actually see Jesus face to face, and he was ecstatic. 
The Greek word really means he was euphoric. Why? Because he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. The word miracle, the Greek word semion, describes a sign, a mark, or a token that verifies or authenticates an alleged report. It is used in the Gospels primarily to depict miracles and supernatural events. Or, Herod Antipas had heard about Jesus' miracles, and now Jesus was standing in front of him, and he wanted to see Jesus do something to authenticate everything he had heard. I want to see a miracle just like I've heard about. But the Bible tells us in Luke 23, verse 9, Jesus refused to perform a miracle on demand for Herod Antipas. And Herod Antipas became so furious that Luke chapter 23, verse 10 tells, And the chief priests and the scribes stood and vehemently accused him. All of this is happening in Herod's court. Herod's in the midst of them. Herod is doing the same thing. Herod, you're going to find a next program. The men of war that were with him and the scribes and the priests, the Bible says they begin to vehemently accuse him. Vehemently, the Greek word eutonos, which means at full pitch, at full volume, strenuously or vigorously. This isn't slightly raising voices. This is screaming at full volume in an uncontrolled manner. Or we could say they were screaming their heads off, yelling at Jesus, accusing Jesus, screaming at Jesus. They were like maniacs out of control because Jesus would not perform a miracle on demand. I don't know if you've ever found yourself in a situation where people were yelling and screaming at you, but that is a very unpleasant situation. Or if you're being accused, you're being accused because you didn't perform as people expected you to perform. And because you didn't perform according to their expectations, they begin to accuse you and express their disapproval of you. If you've ever felt that, Jesus understands because that is what happened to Jesus when he was in Herod's palace in the city of Jerusalem. Herod said, do a miracle for me. I've been hoping for this. Jesus refused, according to Luke 23, verse 9. And when Jesus refused, Herod, the men of war that were with him, and the scribes and the elders, the religious leaders, lost control and began vehemently accusing him, the Greek word literally meaning screaming their heads off like maniacs out of control, assaulting Jesus verbally. If you've ever been through anything like that, Jesus understands. Go to Jesus. Talk to Jesus when you feel you've been verbally abused because he really understands and Jesus will help you. We're out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. From the courtyard of Pilate to the hill of Calvary, every step Jesus took on that Good Friday, he had you in mind. The Bible says Jesus died so our debt could be paid in full. In his book, Paid in Full, Rick Renner guides you through the details of Jesus' final hours on earth. In Paid in Full, you'll discover that this striking narrative of love and redemption is much more than the story taught in Sunday school. This powerful book can be yours for just $15. When you call or go online today, you can also get unknown facts about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $40, you can discover the power of the cross and the plan to forgive mankind of sin like never before. Don't miss this special offer, paid in full, and unknown facts about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Call now or go to renner.org. My name is Joe Renner coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And I want to tell you how your support is impacting thousands of people right here in Moscow. All around the world, people are living longer, and many elderly people in Moscow are left helpless and lonely. Loneliness is a terrible thing. No one should be left to die in loneliness. But because of your financial support, we're able to reach these wonderful people. Each week, we hold a concert for this great generation. After the concert, we invite these people to stay for a Bible study where they hear about Christ. 
Through these events, thousands of people have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior in the sunset years of their lives. Now, not only are they finding community, overcoming their loneliness, but they're finding hope. They're finding Jesus. Would you consider joining us as a partner today? With your support, we're able to reach even more of these precious people. No one should die lonely. More importantly, no one should die without the opportunity to know Jesus. With your support, we're able to reach these people. Right from your home, you can help us help others by becoming a partner and a part of the solution. Please call us or go online to winner.org. Your generous support makes a difference. Please call or go online right now. Today I've been talking to you about the verbal abuse that Jesus received when he was in Herod's palace in Jerusalem. It was a palace built by Herod the Great, but Herod the Great by this time was dead. Now it was occupied by one of his sons, Herod Antipas, who was the ruler of Galilee. He had jurisdiction of Galilee, and that's why Pilate sent Jesus to Herod's palace to be judged by Herod. And Herod became furious when Jesus did not perform a miracle on demand. And the Bible tells us that Herod and the men of war that were with him and the scribes and the elders, all the religious leaders, they begin to scream vehemently at Jesus. That word vehemently in Greek is the word eutonos, which means screaming like maniacs. They simply lost control of themselves and begin verbally abusing Jesus. And Jesus sat there and took it. There was nothing he could do. And that's why Jesus understands what you feel like when you're verbally abused. Jesus understands. And right now I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you understand. I thank you that Jesus understands everything that we've been through. And Father, I pray today for every person who feels they've been physically abused, mentally abused, or verbally abused because they didn't perform according to someone else's expectations. And I pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit and wisdom for them to know what to do in their situation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Wow, it's good. Well, I'm speaking to you from my series called Unknown Facts About the Death, Burial, and Resurrection of Jesus Christ. I really want you to order this. This will take you deeper in your understanding of all the events that happened at the time of Easter. Also, my book, Paid in Full, an in-depth look at the defining moments of Christ's passion. When we come back, we're going to go back to Herod's palace and see what else happened to Jesus when he was judged by Herod Antipas. Thank you for being with me. And remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, it says, where the word of a king is, there is power. And that's absolutely true. So let God's word release its power in your life today. And I'll see you in the next program. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.